guys, so it's 710 2023 and um, for about a week I've been on this major homework project that the Lord has given me. I'm calling it Fight Club because it's how to effectively war in prayer and it takes some fighting but it's a different kind of fighting than you might think, okay? So stick with me on this. Um, there's some really cool stuff in here. So 1 Timothy 6, 12, fight the good fight of faith. Every single day we're fighting. That's part of the gig, okay? Um, we are in a continuous war with the unseen world. I like to call it what is behind the veil because some of us can see behind the veil. We can see the demonic activity or the angelic activity. Um, God has made it clear throughout the Old and the New Testament that there are certain standards, that there are certain things that he will not put up with. And it seems in our generation that has not been made clear to what that actually means or to what we are actually fighting in that unseen side that is against us. So last week I was studying Proverbs 26 about the seven abominations that offend God. And I had just been thinking through some different sins and I was thinking how you know Satan's the um, person who was responsible for original sin right and um, then I started looking up Satan's sins and there's more than one sin that is attested to him as being the origin of that sin and that is exactly what started this entire thing and then the Lord has led me down different paths on the Bible. He's given me dreams and words that I need to like, oh, add this or oh, go find that. And then I've already been on projects that have either been completed or like things I've been in the process of learning. So in this project, he just kind of took all those things and put them in one group together. And every day I thought, okay, I'm done. And then the next day I'd wake up with more things I had to go do. So I'm finally done. And this is so cool because I think it's really going to help us. Now, if you recall in that dream that was in the middle of um, a prophecy and it was called the soldier in training and he was told to bind the controlling spirit and then call down the ruling spirit over it. And I thought, well, we'll learn that in heaven because I don't know what all that, you know, is. And I knew maybe a few things that I could do in that realm, but in this one, we get a lot more. Okay, so to me, this is seriously like the coolest project I've probably worked on because I have a serious pattern seeking brain and the patterns just kept lining up and lining up and lining up. And I'm like, yes, I love this. It was so great. So um, to be efficient, we need to understand the system of leadership that Satan has. Okay, now um, I think sometimes we think that Satan is the one who does everything to us or for us and maybe some demons but there's an entire structure that is listed out in the bible and um it's not maybe everything that they do we don't know everything they do but it is a skeleton that gives us enough structure it is definable enough that we can conquer with it okay now we have been shown various verses um, where Satan himself can leave his throne, he can come down, enter our world, he can enter a person, um, he can directly affect a human. And here are some of the examples of that. I'm just going to flash some verses up um, and you can look those up. What I'm going to show you is his entire leadership structure because he really delegates a lot of things that you may not understand or delegated. And that gives us more advantage to take apart the system, okay? So we're going to start with the leadership system of Satan, okay? Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to run through just the basics, and then we're going to dig in deeper and deeper and deeper, and we're kind of just going to spiral down until we get to how to solve it, how to get through and conquer. Okay. So, Team S, um, there are three categories that rule our world, okay? There's the rulers of this world, and the rulers of darkness, and the rulers of spiritual wickedness. Um, then the number one in charge is Satan, and he is in high places in heaven. He's managed, the, Satan's basic kingdom is managed by principalities, which are princes, principalities, and the rulers or princes of this age. This delivers the spirit of the world. This creates natural man and man's wisdom via the host of the high ones on high over the kingdoms of this world through the prince of the power of air and through the powers 
encouraging unrighteousness and ungodliness, which includes fulfilling lusts and desires of the flesh and mind, enslaving the unsaved by keeping people in the proper expectation of the wrath of God, via the mighty little R rulers of dominions who sit on thrones, they use evil spirits and devils through the doctrine of demons, which is also known as the great harlot sitting on many waters, mystery Babylon the great, the mother of harlots, the mother of abominations of the earth, the woman in red and purple. She encourages harlotry, idolatry, and fornication, controlled by the fear of death. The result is possessed or oppressed by demons, and this includes Satan's ministers, which are kings of the earth, tares, false prophets, deceitful workers, wise men, sorcerers, magicians, false prophets, sons of the wicked one, masqueraders as ministers of righteousness, and the carnally minded, which live according to their flesh, they keep their mind on things of flesh, they have enmity against God, they are walking in condemned sinful flesh. So what is the end result? The end consequence is death. Their end will be according to their works, as many as are under the works, of the law are under the curse. No one is justified by the law. The dead are judged by their works. Anyone not found written in the book of life goes into the lake of fire. Now I have tons of verses and tons of Greek that go with this, but so we can be in a timely fashion, I'm gonna really trim that down and I will put um, the PDF below that you can download or I'll put some verses and stuff maybe at the end. Okay, so the whole area that we look at, live in, exist in, is the sin realm, okay? Sin is missing the mark, lawlessness, and offense, and not fearing God. So the rulers of this age, this is the Lord of this age and his demons, according to the Greek. And the rulers of spiritual wickedness is the Lord of this age and his demons that rule over, and this is wickedness. So depravity, evil purposes, evil desires, malice, spite, corruption, defilement, sin, iniquity, immoral, immorality, idolatry, and wickedness. And then the rulers of darkness, that's the Lord of this age and his demons that rule over spiritual darkness, sins, godlessness, ignorance towards God, disrespect towards God, uh, pushing ungodliness to immorality, and misery of ungodliness. So the two basic categories are darkness and wickedness, okay? Those are the two ruling entities under Satan. All right, so then we have in charge of the whole gig is Satan himself, right? And um, he has a lot of nicknames or a lot of names in the Bible. And I personally wonder if Satan is even his name because um, God has a very strong element in these prophecies that say, don't speak the name of the false Messiah. So I just wonder if Satan is just a, another nickname for that because um, there's a Jewish tradition where you don't speak the name of something you don't believe in. So um, anyway, his names are Beelzebub, ruler of demons, prince of evil spirits, the devil, the accuser, the serpent of old, the dragon, the enemy, the adversary, Lucifer, the morning star, Beelzebub, the tempter, the wicked one, the ruler of this age and the god of this age, the angel of light and the Levithian. Now we know that Satan is completely conquered by Jesus, okay? We don't even have to um, worry about that. We're just studying the structure. We're not in fear. We are not even uh, negatively influenced because we know we conquer, okay? Now, where does he reign? So here we have this cloud that's the high places. It says in the Greek that it is inside or within the heavenly regions. So it's up in the heavens where he reigns. And there's another verse that he has a throne. So we know he has a place where he hangs out and that's his deal. Off of this, this in this realm of, of high places, there are managers and they are the princes of regions and the princes of time, okay? And the princes of time in the Greek means the time before the messianic kingdom. So all the time until Jesus takes over and then it's gonna be completely different because all those guys are gonna be in the pit, right? But in the regions and the places, that's where things get diversified and down to our level. They have a structure though. 
that the princes, they give orders to what is called the spirit of the world, which I make as a shortcut as sow, like a pig, okay? Because that is their symbol. They like to sacrifice pigs and all of that stuff. So the spirit of the world, that represents the spirit of natural man without God, okay? Just that kind of animalistic natural man, that's what this is talking about. Okay, then underneath the authority of Satan and the principalities and the spirit of the world is the host of the high ones on high. The high ones on high are all the ones that exist somewhere. I don't know if it's God's heaven, but it's somewhere up in the heavens. They report to the spirit of the world and they report to the principalities and the principalities and the spirit of the world give them directions. Now the host means the organized armies for warfare. So whether you think you are or not, you're in a war. You signed up or not, you're in a war. That's just what it is. So the host of the highlands on high, these organized armies, they hold royal power over dominions, world affairs, governments, and ungodly multitudes of men. They don't hold power over you unless you're ungodly. The host of the high ones on high is too much for me to say. So I call them the ho-hos, okay? So the ho-hos are organized armies for warfare. They rule through the kings for the kingdoms of the world as well as directly to unsaved people, okay? Now, how do they do it? They do it through the prince of the power of air, which I call Papa because, you know, I need short things. I got to write it so many times when I'm preparing this stuff, I have to shorten it up. So the Prince of the Power of Air is the chief commander with authority and free will over mankind in the lower air where man lives. He is the spirit that works in the sons of disobedience and unbelievers. So he's a very important player in their entire system. He's the chief commander, but he has others under him, okay? The ones under him are called powers, okay? So he's the chief power in the, like, power, all right? Now, the powers, they have authority over mankind as monarchs with the power of choice and authority to manage domestic affairs. So they have the single rule they have, you know, Satan's global plan to make everything yuck, but they have a specific area that they rule over on this earth. Their entire job is to encourage ungodliness and unrighteousness, which we know from Romans is a no-go, okay? And this, this ungodliness and unrighteousness also includes just that fleshly animal man, which is lust of the flesh, desires of the flesh, being carnally minded, desires of the mind, lusts of the mind. This makes sinful man. This spirit, remember Papa, the spirit that is um, the chief commander with authority over mankind, okay? He is the spirit that works in the sons of disobedience and unbelievers. He creates sinful man. His realm, his like authority creates that sinful, rebellious, I don't want to deal with God behavior and attitude. Okay. So of course the sinful man's end is always going to be God's wrath. It's going to be eternal fire. I mean, that's standard. These powers, they have rulers under them called dominions. Okay. So I call them the tiny R's because, um, they are, are in a high office under a king or a queen. So they're not really like a king or a queen high. They're just kind of like um, the person that's just under the king that takes all the notes and gets all the things done. And they do have royal thrones though, and they do have free will and they do have um, power, but their power is more similar to a judge or a governor or a head of state. And what they do is they rule over a dominion. And these dominions can be things like a region like Alabama, or it can be like a city, like Tampa. It can be um, an area like media, or um, sports, or um, money, or religions that are not Christian, or drugs, drinking, uh, gambling, um, pride of nation, um, just a school and education, like how they decide to retrain kids in our generation and say, you know, truth isn't truth anymore or whatever. So the, that is run by the dominions. The dominions are the ones who are like, you know, we're going to influence this guy here to make it cool to say that 
this colored flag is the cool thing to teach in kindergarten or whatever. So the dominions use evil spirits, which are commonly known to us as demons or devils, and they are the messengers and, and the ministers of the devil. They're like the preachers for the devil. Think of it that way. They're like, they're the errand boy that goes and does the actual work, okay? And they use the doctrine of demons. So this is the root of all false religions, paganism, occult, mysticism, all of it. The doctrine of demons always comes back down to the same exact elements. It doesn't matter what the false religion is or if it's the occult. It always comes back to the same elements that make um, those people obey in a certain way, worship in a certain way, act in a certain way, okay? And that is called Mystery Babylon. I know there's also, you know, possibly a city that's called Mystery Babylon. I'm telling you, Mystery Babylon relates to all false religion coming from the doctrine of demons. It's in the language of the Greek. Let's slow down and run through why the doctrine of demons and the great harlot are the same, okay? So we have the doctrine of demons, which in the Greek says teaching, instruction, the information, rules to regulate behavior and thought. Okay, that's the doctrine. And demons is evil spirits, messengers, ministers of the devil, superior to men, but inferior to God. Let's look at the great harlot sitting on many waters. Megas, the great harlot, is, that means extraordinarily proud, full of arrogance. She's a harlot, which is defilement for the sake of gain, idolatry, Babylon, etc. Um, she is sitting on many waters. Sitting is fixed above or to be superimposed on top of. And then many waters is a poetic way to say many people. Now, Mystery Babylon the Great, that's the one that's in Revelation, and that's the one that a lot of people like to say is United States or England or Israel or whatever. I don't, it doesn't matter. It says, Mystery is the hidden secret confined to only the initiated, a secret and hidden thing not obvious to general understanding. Babylon means confusion. So it's a secret confusion. It was originally to the territory of Babylon and the Chaldeans. However, it's allegorically the Roman seat that is corruption and idolatry and the direct enemy of Christianity, okay? The mother of harlots, this says the manager of idolatry and confusion. The mother of abominations of the earth, the manager of foul detestable thing of idols in the inhabited land of men. Then the woman in red and purple, a woman of any age, especially betrothed or married. And then the color of her garments is very royal, okay? Now, what is her purpose? She encourages harlotry, idolatry, and fornication. That's the worship of idols and unlawful lust physically or spiritually. The doctrine of demons, that is literally what the doctrine of demons is. Now, the people who do worship idols and the people who are in flesh are all controlled by the fear of death, which Satan, it says Satan holds death's power, okay? Death is a guy, okay? And it's also an event, but he holds the power that death has and he adds fear to it so people are scared to not obey him. The result of this is either demon possession or demon oppression. So demon oppression is harsh control and powers used against a person by a demon. So this is that constant nagging, fighting, you know, you're always like, oh, I wish I didn't say that, and then you pray against it, you know. That's, that's demon oppression, when they're just kind of always on you, or if you don't pray against them, they can hang on you, and that could be your new habit, or your new illness, or your new whatever, because you're allowing them to stay there, okay? Then there's demon possession. This is when a demon literally takes over a person and they live within them. And this is a person under the power of a demon. So they will be directed to murder or they will be directed to do something that they may not naturally have done, but because that demon lives within them, they do it. Okay, so this includes the carnally minded and Satan's ministers, which are two separate categories. 
but they're kind of the same because all of Satan's ministers are carnally minded, but not all the carnally minded are Satan's ministers, okay? So the carnally minded is the Romans one kind of thing, having the mind and purpose and heart to do sensual animal nature apart from God and craving on um, what sin entices you to do. So this means living according to the flesh, having your mind on things of the flesh, having hatred or enmity towards God and walking in condemned sinful flesh. Now the Satan's ministers, notice I put a little uh, Pinocchio nose on this guy. They're servants of the prince of evil spirits, that's Satan directly, who executes his commands. Now the demons I don't think have access directly to Satan. I think it goes down this you know channel but it's still what Satan wants to happen. So these are Satan's ministers, tares within the church, false apostles, deceitful workers, wise men that aren't wise, they use men's wisdom, sorcerers, false prophets, masqueraders of ministers of righteousness, the sons of the wicked one, and the magicians. I wanted to find those categories for a second, okay? Um, a servant, a minister of Satan is someone who executes the commands of another, especially within the church, but it can also be within the world. Now, kings of the earth, this is literally the leaders of the people, the Lord of the land on the G, the, the earth where people of the, the men are inhabiting the land, the countries, the territories with fixed boundaries. This is the literal kings that we have, the literal presidents that we have. The tares are a kind of darnel, which is a poisonous ryegrass called false wheat that resembles wheat, but the grains are black. False apostles in the Greek is one who falsely claims to be an ambassador of Christ, a pretended preacher. A deceitful worker is um, someone filled with guile or deceit, sly cunning, craftiness, shrewdness, trickiness, and the worker or laborer is often one who works in agriculture or craftsmen. So that is obviously talking about people that are within the church that are deceitful as well as people that are outside of the church. Wise men are learned, shrewd, in wide amount of information. Okay, they have a wide amount of administrative skills, but they're wise in their own eyes. They're not wise in God's eyes. Sorcerers are those who practice witchcraft or sorcery and they whisper enchantments and spells and they are diviners. Magicians are ones that pro possess and engrave the occult knowledge, the diviners, magicians, astrologers that hold the book, the teller of hidden things. The false prophets is one acting on the part of the divinely inspired prophet uttering falsehoods under the name of divine prophecies, a religious imposter, a pretended foreteller. The sons of the wicked one are the kin of the offspring, a descendant of the pupils of a teacher. They are full of labors, they bring toils, annoyances, perils. They are evil, wicked, and bad. Then there's masqueraders as ministers of righteousness. Masqueraders is to change the figure of, to have the appearance of someone, or to be like the class of people, to be in disguise, okay? Ministers of righteousness is so someone that follows the directions of someone higher than them. And then righteousness is the state of being justified by God and living with integrity with virtue purity of life and correct thinking so they're pretending to be saved they're pretending to be justified by god but they're not all right then we've got now the carnally minded and satan's ministers the consequence of a life lived in either of these categories is death okay we know from lots of verses that i'm going to post at the end that their end is according to works um as many as are under the works of law are under the curse no one is justified by the law. The dead are judged by works. Anyone not found in the book of life goes to the lake of eternal fire. So that's the end. If you're going to follow the path that Satan has laid out and you're going to, you know, take part in all of that. Okay, so um, we're going to get into what the abominations are next. Okay, so... Um, our generation is not really that schooled in the understanding of how fully we are entrenched in a pagan society. We are not fully understanding what God means by an abomination. And we're going to dig a little bit into that so that we can um, more effectively pray because it does make a huge difference. Most of us in our generation were not 
given the proper skills to pray against what we live in in this spiritual, okay? We've come to accept illnesses, diseases, irritants, vile behaviors, dangers, lying, whatever, on our everyday lives, and we really do not need to, nor should we. Um, you should be aware that demons can jump on or in a person with very little trouble. I want to tell you this story. It's very brief, but it's about a friend of mine. Um, she was given an assignment by the Lord to go into the inner city, and um, some things were transpiring she was told to do, but this is the part that counts for what we're going to deal with. Um, there were a bunch of homeless people lined up kind of against a wall, I'm guessing. And there was a guy who was homeless and he was going and fist bumping everybody in line. And she was given eyes to see behind the veil, which she knew he was, um, it, he had a legion of demons. And every time the fist bump happened, a demon would jump off him and go willingly into the person he was touching. And so um, it's that fast, it's that easy for people who are not fighting in the spiritual world to be oppressed or to be possessed. It's that quick. So the, what we're gonna learn here is super important and given the fact that the darkness is gonna be kicking up that we were told about in the seven um, pivotal moments, this information is gonna be really handy. Okay. okay, so let's get into the abominations. Proverbs 26, 25, he who hates disguises it with lips and lays upon deceit within himself. When he speaks kindly, do not believe him, for there are seven abominations in his heart. Then Proverbs 6, 16 to 19 says, these six things the Lord hates. Yes, seven are an abomination to him, a proud look, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked plans, feet that are swift to running to evil, a false witness who speaks lies, and one who sows discord among brethren. So here's the seven abominations, and I gave it a little nickname, just shortened them up what they actually represent, just so that it could be much easier to use to teach everything else, okay? So pride, deceit, murder, wicked, evil, malice, and discord. Okay. Then we have Proverbs 6, 12 through 15 that says a worthless, meaning ungodly in the Hebrew, a worthless, ungodly person, a wicked man, walks with a perverse mouth. He winks his eyes, he shuffles his feet, and he points his fingers. Perversity is in his heart. He devises evil continually. He sows discord. Therefore, his clarity shall come suddenly, and he shall be broken without remedy. So these seven abominations are true of every single unsaved person. In the Old Testament, it was every non-Hebrew, and now in our times, in our covenant, it is every non-Christian, okay? So these six hated things in this thing, everything was on there except murder. Here's the seven abominations layered over with sins from Satan, the original sin. So 1 John 3, 8 says he sinned from the beginning, right? It talks in these verses, which I encourage you to look up. Um, pride, desire to be above God and pride, deceit, author of lies, deception with cunning, outwit and cunning, original lie. Number three is murder, the origin of murder and to kill. Uh, number four is wicked, temptations to the flesh. Number five is evil, to steal and destroy. Number six is malice, which is corrupted wisdom. Seven is discord. The dragon gave him his power and to sow discord. Every single thing that God's abominations were, there's a verse in there that talks about the, the abomination itself. There's also a verse that shows that Satan is the one who started each one of these. Okay, let's look at this little thing. It's kind of interesting. If you look at the six things the Lord hates and seven are abomination to him, that original verse, and then we go and look at Satan's sins. They all stem from pride. Okay, pride's the tippity top. He led man down all six of his abominations in the beginning, in Genesis. Okay, so Satan's first sin was that he thought he was better than God. Okay, the second sin, Satan's first method to turn humanity to his sin was a lying tongue. He used a lying tongue to tell um, Eve, oh no, the apple's good, it's fine. 
go ahead. Okay, the first crime that was murder, that was Cain and Abel, Genesis. Um, how the first murder occurred was premeditated, so that is evil. Um, man's first response to sinning was that he told a lie. He was like, oh no, no, I didn't do that. And then the first division is that Cain was sent away from the family. That's the first time family was broken apart that is recorded. All of his seven sins coordinate with how the entire fall of humanity happened into sin. Okay? Now, there's seven sin categories. And remember with the, the previous part, that had all the different, there was Sal and Papa and Ma Baby and all that, right? The categories align with who rules over them. Okay? So we have the first category is pride. Darkness rules over it. But then he gives it over to Sal, which gives it over to Papa, which gives it to Ma Baby. Then um, number two is deceit, wickedness, Sal, and then Ma Baby. So this is like the path of how they get from place to place. Murder, wickedness, Sal, Pa Baby. Wicked, wickedness, Sal, Pa Baby. Evil, darkness, Sal, pa, Papa, and Ma Baby. Malice, wickedness, Sal, and Papa. Discord, darkness, Sal, Papa, Ma Baby. So here's a flow chart to just make it a little easier to understand, and then we're gonna put some words with it. So the ruler of darkness, he covers ungodly, ignorance, obscurity, darkness, immorality, and disrespect for the divine. The spiritual ruler of wickedness on the right, he covers depravity, sin, iniquity, malice, evil purposes, evil desires, and wickedness. Now those are gonna to come to life. So we have the spirit of the world, Sal. He controls natural man, animal man, and man's wisdom. Then he gives power to the prince of the power of the air, which divides power between the rulers of darkness and the spiritual wickedness, okay? So on the left, we've got ungodly, ungodly thoughts, ungodly deeds, unrighteous heart, unrighteous life, unrighteous character, no reverence toward God, and discord. Those are in the ruler of darkness. Papa himself, he rules obstinance. You know, that stubborn nature, or you're above God because I don't want to believe that something's better than me. Now, on the right side, under the rule of the spirit of wickedness, is opposition to the divine will, unrighteousness, desire for evil thoughts, deeds that violate the law, to be the cause for evil, to make the path to evil, to carry out evil, plans and intents, to purpose the sensual animalistic flesh, enticement to sin, fulfilling the lusts of the flesh, fulfilling lusts of the mind, fulfilling desires of the flesh, fulfilling the desires of the mind. Now, Mother of Babylon is going to be lower, okay? But she shares a couple of traits that are isolated to Papa and Ma Baby. Mother of Babylon, Ma Baby, is fulfilling lusts and desires of flesh and mind and also discord. They share that. Okay, then the Mother of Babylon, Ma Baby, on the under the rule of darkness, she does hidden secrets, confusion, full arrogance towards God, overstepping the majesty of God, idol worship and discord. Under her own rule is pride, arrogance, and scoffing. And then under the spiritual wickedness rule is the fulfilling of the lusts of the flesh, lusts of the mind, desires of the flesh, and desires of the mind. Okay, so here's a flow chart to break it down, all right? Romans 1, 18 and 21 tells us for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in righteousness. Romans 1 21 because although they knew God they did not glorify him nor were they thankful they became futile in their thoughts and their foolish hearts were darkened darkness and then Romans 1 22 23 professing to be wise they became fools and they changed the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like corruptible man and birds and four-footed animals and creeping things. Okay, so here is where this breaks down. We've got man. The spirit of the world affects pride. The fact that they have the pride gives them dark and foolish hearts and makes them unclean to God. They're ungodly and they're unrighteous. Because they're ungodly and unrighteous and foolish and have darkened hearts, they're fine with the doctrine of demons. It doesn't offend them, it doesn't bother them. They agree to it. So the doctrine of demons is rooted in deceit because it's all lies. 
and deceit leads Ma Baby out to be the front runner, okay? Now, Ma Baby, she encourages coveting, which spawns off idolatry, theft, and the craving for money. Deceit spawns off error, so that's lots of different kinds of error. Idolatry spawns off libation, alcohol, uh, sexual immorality, drugs, and occult. Now, everything in the yellow circle is also a wicked behavior because one thing can be evil. But if you continually do it as a behavior, that becomes wicked. Okay? And if you do it with violence, that becomes wicked. Now, if we go to the back to the man and we say, okay, unclean, ungodly, unrighteous, his unclean, foolish nature leads to evil and discord. Okay, Evil leads to malice, which leads to ill will. Ill will can lead to murder or jealousy, and those are wicked behaviors. Jealousy can lead to murder as well. Go back up to evil. Evil leads to anger. Anger can lead to malice. Anger can lead to murder. Anger can lead to abuse. Where am I getting all of this? There are verses and in the Greek, it talks about the origin of each of the different types of sin that one will lead to another. That's where I got all of this. Discord. Discord branches out to riots, abuse. Abuse can turn to murder. Discord also goes to divisions and libation, alcohol, and alcohol leads to sexual immorality. Now, those are wicked behaviors, but the wickedness also leads to discord. So it can lead itself like in a big cycle, okay? If you look at this, the mother of Babylon rules the left side where the doctrine of demons is the most dominant, and the prince of the power of air, Papa, rules the right side. So we're going to look at this in a little chart form. So we have sow. He, the sin produces a certain thing and this is where we get to know which spirit rules over it. Okay. So we have natural man and his ruling, that ruling spirit is the unclean spirit. There's verses there you can look up. Um, and then you can also see that this leads to certain things. Living in the flesh. So that leads you to Papa. Okay. Depravity of heart, filthiness, foul spirit. See Ma Baby, and that will be in the section of unclean. Foul spirit is unclean. And then um, impure. So man's wisdom, this is the ruling spirit of foolishness. So this is sedition, rebellion, dissension, division, heresy, reviling, and oppressing the truth. That's what Sao is kind of ruling over, okay? Then we've got, I'm gonna go the left side first with Ma Baby. We have sin and then what it produces. So unclean is natural man. The ruling spirit is an unclean spirit. So lust, shamelessness, impure motives, luxury living, lewdness, wantonness, filthy, misdeeds, reckless, um, can cause a person to be deaf or blind, illness, convulsions, diseases, can be a legion. The demon can speak out of the person and it will be used by the Antichrist Trinity because those frogs that come out and speak, they are the unclean spirit. Then we've got pride, and the ruling spirit is pride. Blasphemy, slander, um, evil speak, reproach to God, um, great swelling words, and idolatry. Deceit, the ruling spirit is the spirit of error. Doctrine of demons, perversion, lies, secrets, gossip, deliberate falsehood, iniquity, straying from the truth, false prophets, false ministers, crafty, slick, exchanging truth for a lie, luring with bait. The next one is covet. The ruling spirit is idolatry. Gluttony, greed, fraud, extortion, robbery, ravenous, vile passions and unbridled. And then idolatry, this branches off of coveting and pride, okay? So this triggers libation. So idolatry, in the practice of idolatry, you're supposed to have alcohol, okay? And it also um, branches into sedition and sexual immorality, okay? The ruling spirit is a perverse spirit. So idols, graven images, carved images, witchcraft, pharmakia, drugs and herbs, div divination, worshiping money, seduction to idols, unrighteousness, ungodly, rituals, charmers, sorcery, mediums, and sexual immorality. All right, we're gonna go back up to the top and look at Papa, what he rules and what the spirit that rules it is. So foolish, 
is the ruling entity is foolishness. Obstinate debate, debating the truth, vain imaginations, unclean spirit, see my baby, uh, foul spirit, anger, see anger. Flesh. Now understand these colors. If it is brown, that's all under like kind of the original man category. And then as it changes colors, it goes with the colors on that color wheel. All right, flesh. See, unclean. The ruling authority is flesh. Enmity towards God, sin, carnally minded, fear of death, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contention, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambition, dissensions, heresy, envy, murder, drunkenness, revelries, and the like. Evil, it's similar to our word is bad, okay? The ruling spirit is the spirit of animosity or a spirit of ill will. So ill will, obscene speech, violent attacks on others, obstinance, um, you're going to see the section that is discord, that's the same, causes deceit, see my baby, and violent, see, uh, see discord. Then anger, this is under evil, okay, so anger happens and then, then hmm, evil happens and anger can happen as a result of anger, says the Greek. So, uh, the ruling spirit is the spirit of anger, it's wrath, ill will, bitterness, rage, clamor, grief, corruption, abuse, cursing, and attacks. Malice, which is the ruling spirit of jealousy, hate, jealousy, zeal, negative, competition, envy. Um, it's from, it's from discord, um, desire to injure, defiled, evil desires, trouble, malicious, murder, sexual immorality, and anger with actions. And then wicked is similar to our word of criminal, okay? So this is the ruling spirit of evil spirit of violence, hatred, murder, disregard for justice, disregard for truth, disregard for virtue, evil lifestyle, evil inaction, full depravity, criminal. And then discord, which is a hardened heart. It is from devoid of truth. It is from hate, from pride, and from wickedness. Um, the ruling spirit is the spirit of pride and an evil, violent spirit. There's two spirits that run that, probably depending on which type of um, discord it is. Obstinate, revelries, riots, violence, libation that causes the spirit of error, also um, causes riots and revelries and sedition. Liberation, sedition, dissension, division, heresy, d despising leadership, abusive mischief, shameful language, scornful, shameful, um, abusive talk, strife, evil suspicions, and frictions between one another. Okay, so we're going to take this list of the trait and the spirit that rules it. And there's some, not that many, that are matching up with this. But some of them have an odor that I've been trained into that I'm going to share. It's hard to share an odor, odor but whatever. So unclean spirit is very foul. It's just a very strong, it's not like body odor smell, it's just a very strong foul smell. Um, spirit of pride is sour plus floral. Um, I don't have one for deceit. Covetry is spicy and dark. And under covetry is the love of money or the spirit of mammon. And that is sweet and kind of awful, like barfy. Um, and that also rules gluttony and collectors. Now, idolatry has, um, I don't know what the, what the original smell is. I don't know that many people that are idolatrous to be around them or to know, have that intimate knowledge of them. But, um, the earth worship, I do know that one. And that is the power of lawlessness that rules it. And they have a warm, earthy, rotting soil smell that is pretty gross. Um, foolishness, I don't have one. Flesh, I don't have one. Evil is a sour smell. Anger is a bitter smell. Um, the ruling spirit of anger, by the way, can be the cause of violent snoring. I was taught that. Um, malice is the spirit of jealousy. Let's see, wickedness is sour mixed with warm, decomposing soil. So it's kind of similar to a perverse spirit, but it's slightly different, um, that odor. Then we've got Discord, which is a old stale wood plus a rotting wet wood smell, those combined. And it's kind of like that. I don't know if you've been in the old houses or old churches and they have that like stinky 
obstinate smell. They just all smell like old house. That's the obstinate, I, re I rebel, I refuse to submit. That's what that smell is. This also controls rebellion. Okay, there's one bonus I'm gonna give you, which is demonic activity from the pit, because this is rampant right now, and that is the smell of sulfur, and that is run by evil and darkness. Just to remember this, the Greek hypotasso is properly under God's arrangement to place in rank under, to submit to, to be subjected to. Luke 10, 17 says, Then the 70 returned with joy, saying, For even the demons are subject to us in your name. Meaning, if we use Jesus' name, they have to. They are subject to us. So that is a little encouraging. Okay, so I want to get into what I like to call the winner's circle section. And um, for many of us that have been sifted, um, God has removed his hand so that we can be sifted, okay? But for your average Christian, everyone has these pretty strong boundaries around them firmly in place. Um, and if you remember in the seven pivotal moments video from 62523, um, it was told that demon activity is going to go through the roof and I can testify that I can smell and see there's tons more in our area. Um, and my friends that are across the different nation, different places are saying the same thing. We even had a non-Christian kid that my daughter knows say, we're having something weird at our house. I think it might be demons. Can you help us? Like the non-Christians are noticing it's getting rampant. Anyway, um, this section is as best as I can get it at this time period. I would love to sit and do this for a month or two straight, but I just don't have that kind of time. And I wanted to make sure you guys are fully functional with how to conquer this, the winner's circle, okay? So uh, that we're gonna do the best we can do in the situation, but um, I wish it were a little more detailed. <laughs> All right, so let's overview. Remember the story of the fist bump homeless guy? I'm gonna call him Mr. Legion. Okay, remember Mr. Legion, he would fist bump and then the demons would just jump off onto the next guy, right? That same woman, she had an experience with that same man. That man came up to try and fist bump her. And the Holy Spirit took over for her and had her speak. She was not, it's not something she would normally say um, but the Holy Spirit, when he went to fist bump her, the Holy Spirit spoke through her and said, touch not the Lord's anointed. And then Mr. Legion bowed down and said, yes, yes, I know, I know, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And he began repenting and backing away. And he was sort of like bowing down. And then he finally got far enough away that he turned and ran. That's the kind of power we have, but we're not using it. And this section is gonna teach us how to use it, okay? Um, and I think this is gonna be kind of cool. So let's look at God's power structure. It's so much easier. It's so much less chaotic. All right, God's power structure. We have God and Jesus. They have full power. They give their power to the angels and to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit can give the power to us. The angels use their power to defend us. That's pretty basically it. You look at this Christian in the circle, very strong. But if they are having their boundary, you see how it's a little darker on the edges, their boundary is prayed up, they're dancing with the Holy Spirit, they're worshiping, they're praying, they're reading their Bible, and that gives them not only the ability to deflect what the demons do, but it also gives them power against the demons, okay? So, let's look at God's um, seven fruits of the Spirit. Remember, we had the seven abominations, these are the seven fruits of the Holy Spirit and they lay on top perfectly as complete opposites. I was so happy when I found this. I was like, oh my gosh, what are the odds? Like, this is a total God thing. God put this through the Bible and there's tons more coming in this and it's so cool. So number one, love. If God so loved us, we ought to love one another. Um, number two, joy, that your joy may be full. Number three, great peace have those who love your law. Number four, patience. Let patience have its perfect work that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. Number five, goodness. You are full of goodness, filled with all knowledge and able to admonish one another. Number six, faithfulness. The just shall live by faith. And number seven, self-control. Continue in faith, love, and holiness with self-control. And this whole entire 
fruit of the Spirit is love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first commandment. This loving God will help you to get these fruits of the Spirit. Because if you love God, you will follow through with everything and you will get the Holy Spirit. So then I thought, huh, there are seven spirits of God. It says in Revelation, um, and from the seven spirits who are before his throne, okay? I thought, well, if we take the Isaiah 11, 2 and say, okay, here's the seven spirits of God, then do they overlap? Do they align with the exact thing that the abominations did? And they do. So we have number one, truth. He will guide you in all truth. Number two is wisdom. Wisdom is the principal thing, therefore get wisdom. Number three is understanding, and the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. Number four is counsel, you will guide me with your counsel. Number five is strength, I will go into the strength of the Lord. Number six is knowledge, escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of Jesus Christ. And number seven is fear the Lord, he who walks in his uprightness fears the Lord. Now. Let me put this on a chart so you can understand what I see, okay? We have the seven spirits of God, the seven abominations right next to them. So you can see they're perfectly opposite. And then we have the seven fruits of the spirit, okay? And then I can show you that each one is completely compatible. So truth, truth's opposite is pride because they did not receive the love of the truth. Well, not receiving it is pride, okay? And then truth is love, obeying the truth through the spirit in sincere love. Wisdom is opposite of deceit, okay? So it says the mouth of the righteous get wisdom, but the tongue that deceives is cut out. And then wisdom brings joy. So God gives wisdom, knowledge, and joy. Understanding is opposite of murder. Slow to wrath has great understanding. Then we have understanding is equal with peace and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding. The counsel is opposite of wicked. They did not listen or incline their ear to turn from their wickedness. If they refuse to take counsel, they're not going to turn, right? The parallel counsel is patience. So you guide me with your counsel and later receive me in glory. You have to wait, patience. Okay, strength is opposite of evil the man who would not make god his refuge but trusted in abundance of his riches and strengthened himself in his evil desire and then goodness is the parallel to strength so strength and goodness encourage your hearts and strengthen you in every good deed and word then we've got knowledge the opposite is malice because they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the lord um, and then the parallel to knowledge is faithfulness. Uh, Till we all come to the unity of faith and the knowledge of the Son of God. So the faith and the knowledge are, they, they're twins. They got to be together. Then we've got the fear of the Lord, which is opposite to discord. Isaiah 50, 10. Who among you fears the Lord? Who obeys the voice of the Lord? And then we have fear of the Lord is parallel with self-control they 1 12 and 14 they obeyed the voice of the lord and the people feared the presence of the lord and they came and they worked all right so here's a summary just so you can see them side by side seven abominations and the seven fruits of the spirit and then the seven abominations and the seven spirits of god I was given one morning that I had to look this up to see if it matched up, and of course it did. <laughs> so Romans 1, the ungodly and the unrighteous. You know, that famous thing that's like, hey, these people all ditched out. They, pre they pretended that they were wise, and they're not, and here's how come they're unrighteous, okay? Those are not in the same order as the seven, but every single trait that is listed fits within the categories and every subtrait fits within the categories. So professing to be wise, they became fools, Romans 122. Unrighteousness and ungodliness starts with the suppression of truth, haters of God, proud, boasters, and unforgiving. Number two, turn God into an image, covetous, deceit, 
whisperers and untrustworthy. Uh, number three, given over to a debased mind, murder. Number four, gave them up to uncleanness, vile passions, wickedness, evil-minded, violent. Number five, their foolish hearts darkened, shameful sex sexual immorality, inventors of evil things. Number six, did not retain God in their minds, maliciousness, full of envy, backbiters, undiscerning, unloving, unmerciful. Number seven, against nature, strife, disobedient to parents. All right, so let's look at this on a chart. The seven abominations, they remain the same. Then we've got Romans 1, suppress the truth, got into an image, debased mind, everything that was on the circles. But then it says they were filled with all unrighteousness. So those fit within each of the things. They were the little phrases they were under in the circles. Now, let's parallel this with its opposite, okay? Pride and suppression of the truth, hating of God, proud boasters and unforgiving. Its opposite is fruit of the spirit is love and the spirit of God is truth, okay? Deceit, um, God in it to an image, covetousness, deceitful whispers and untrustworthy. Its opposite is joy and the spirit of wisdom. Murder, debased mind and murder. Its opposite is peace and understanding. Wickedness, uncleanness, vile passions, wickedness, evil-minded, violent. Its opposite is patience and counsel. Evil, foolish hearts darkened, shameful sexual immorality, inventors of evil things. Its opposite is goodness and strength. Malice, um, not retaining God in their knowledge. Malicious, full of envy, backbiters, undiscerning, unloving, unmerciful. That's opposite to faithful and the spirit of knowledge. Then we've got discord being against nature, strife and disobedient to parents. Its opposite is self-control and the spirit of the fear of the Lord. So it says, for the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so they were without excuse. They're choosing to stay on the left side. They're not choosing to go to the right because of their obstinance and pride. Okay, so I'm summarizing the abomination and then what spirit rules it and then the fruit of the spirit and the spirits of God, okay? Take a screenshot of that. You might need that in the future. Okay, I'm not rereading all of that. It's all the same stuff, but it tells you which spirits are ruling under each category, okay? Now, what do you do? For effective prayer, follow the Lord's own advice and first pray something like this. Lord, Please make a boundary of protection around me and my family and my property. Please block the evil ones from access to my mind, heart, and soul. And please send your mighty angels and release their full power to protect me and my family for your service. Next, isolate the specific issue. You might see or smell or experience a negative spirit, a negative trait in someone else, a negative behavior in yourself, whatever. You're going to see something that's in Satan's realm of control, okay? Then you go to the chart and you look for the color. And you say, okay, what color is it? Then you go to pray the binding of that origin spirit that's on that chart. Then you pray to loose the spirit of God on the same color. So the spirit of God. Then you pray the replacement of the fruit of the spirit to develop to be shown or to be dominant in that person or yourself or whoever you're praying over. Um, so if you look at this, let's just take a scenario. Let's say that you felt like you were being really prideful. You said like something very prideful and you were like, oh, I shouldn't have done that. So you should identify that it's pride. It's on pink. Okay. So is it unclean spirit, spirit of foolishness or spirit of pride? Well, it's spirit of pride. Okay, what are its opposites? Love and the spirit of truth, okay? So you're gonna pray, please bind the spirit of pride, and then you're gonna pray, and please loose the full power of the spirit of truth and help me to express love. Do you see how it like makes a little circle of how you can identify what it is and fight against it in the proper way, okay? Now, this is different. We've never heard to do this, right? This is weird. Well, you know what? It's not weird. It's the way God wants it. Because look at this. 2 Corinthians 10, 4. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. 
This is the way you have to pray if you want to get stuff gone. You have to start with that binding prayer that he already gave us. But then you've got to look at what's the origin spirit and how do I get out of this? Or how does how do I get my husband out of this? Or how do I get my kids out of this? Whatever it is, origin spirits is how you deal with it. So pray for the full measure. Just as the world is reaching its fullness of sin, because we can't have the end of the world until we have the fullness of sin, right? I was told personally to ask for the full measure of gifting so I could be more effective for God. Okay, so basically that's like asking for the full measure of Christ likeness. There's a measure. So 1 Corinthians 10 26, for the earth is the Lord's and all its fullness. Ephesians 3 14 to 19, for this reason I bow my knees to the Father of the Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, and he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith that you being rooted and grounded in love you may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width and the length and the depth and the height um, to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge that you may be filled with all the fullness of God so it's a biblical thing to pray for the fullness of God or the fullness of a trait, okay? Romans 15, 29. When I shall come in the fullness of blessing of the gospel of Christ. Psalm 16, 11. You show me the path of life in your presence is fullness of joy. Um, Ephesians 1, 23. Which his body, the fullness of him who fills in all. So basically, Christ likeness is the filling. Christ is the filler, okay? You're asking for the fullness of a trait or a um, something that is going to help you, okay? Okay, so how do you do this? You have to have an effective mindset. Philippians 4, 8, that's a pretty common verse. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue, if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. That verse aligns identically with the spirits of God, the fruits of the spirit, and opposing the seven abominations. Truth, love, whatever things are true, that conquers pride. Wisdom, joy, whatever things are noble, that conquers deceit. Understanding, peace, whatever things are just, that conquers murder. Counsel, patience, and whatever things are pure, that counsels wickedness. Strength, goodness, whatever things are lovely, that counsels evil. Knowledge, faithfulness, whatever things are of good report, that counsels malice. Fear of the Lord, self-control. And if there's anything of virtue or anything that's praiseworthy, that counsels discord. Is this amazing? Come on, someone rejoice with me. <laughs> I love this thing. Okay, how to achieve the mindset. Okay, that's the mindset. Now, how do you achieve it? Every single day, this is what you need to do. Read God's word. That's truth. Pink. Uh, pray to the Lord and set aside a prayer time. That's equivalent to joy. Pray the boundaries, bindings, and release of power. That gives you peace. Um, number four, listen in prayer daily. That's patience. Number five, worship the Lord. It's goodness. Number six, engage in obedient activities that serve the Lord. That's faithfulness. And then seven, stay in step with the Holy Spirit. That's self-control. This just keeps going. It's so awesome, you guys. Okay, so what do you do next? You stay suited up. Everyone knows the whole armor of God. I'm not rereading the whole thing. Let's look at the chart. Spirit of God and the fruits of the Spirit looked at the armor. It's not in the same order because it's Paul. He usually jumbles the order, but he always has every element. So the spiritual armor, look what parallels. Truth, love, the belt of truth, and the helmet of salvation. Wisdom and joy, the sword of the Spirit, which is God's word. Understanding and peace, which is the gospel of peace. Counsel and patience, which is the prayer and supplication with perseverance. Strength and goodness, which is the breastplate of righteousness. Knowledge and faithfulness, which is the shield of faith. Fear of the Lord and self-control, which is to boldly speak the gospel. Okay, so there's two more things. One is you have to have full confidence or true faith. That's how it always is said in the prophecies. True faith, full confidence. 
be fully persuaded that God is over and above any evil power, no matter how high on the power structure. Okay, so we have Romans 8, 38. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be sep shall separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Zechariah 10, 5. They shall be like mighty men who tread down their enemies, the mire of the streets in battle. They shall fight because the Lord is with them, and the riders on horses shall be put to shame. Psalm 144, 1 and 2. Blessed be the Lord of my rock, who trains my hands for war and my fingers for battle, my loving kindness and my fortress, my high tower and my deliverer, my shield, and the one in whom I take refuge, who subsides my who subdues people under me Colossians 2 10 and you are complete in him who is the head of all principality and power if he's over it he can stop it he can change it Romans 8 31 if God is for us who can be against us and then the last part I'm gonna try and get through this really quick but I was told some things I need to tell you kind of like bonus information um, that is things that either help me or the things I have learned that are practical tips that should help you. Okay, so number one, there's seven of them. <laughs> number one, stay pure of heart in forgiveness and by doing communion. The Lord will not use you if you are not pure of heart. I'm telling you, that's a fact. Number two, recall your position. You are not a victim. You are a warrior, fight like a warrior. Where you walk is holy ground. Act like it. Claim it back. Um, let them know that you own that place. Your smallness does not matter. They may be many. They may multiply easily. They may spread easily. But you have authority over them in Christ. Use your biblical authority to call down God's power. Quote Isaiah 54, 17. Until you believe it, no weapon formed against you will prosper. Number three disrupt their normal this is war disrupt their normal pray to bind up the gates of hell pray to bind the powers of darkness pray to bind their rulers and princes pray for the full power and authority for the angels against them pray for their dominions to fall into confusion and dissension number four pray for your local area in a warlike manner their team is not honest or loyal by nature. Capitalize on this in prayer. I drive by a psychic 12 to 24 times a week on the way to the theater, okay? I pray that the employees are stricken with illness and confusion, that they cannot hear from their leaders or demons um, very clearly. I pray that the angels stop the customers from coming in. I pray that they go out of business and specifically that I see a for sale sign before I am translated. I pray that every single time I pass by. I pray on every street I drive on that the angels go before me and behind me and around me to sweep the demons off the street and make it safe and turn it back into holy land. Um, number five, limit what access evil and darkness have to you. Focus on God, his word, his kingdom work, worship, prayer, and lovely and positive things. Avoid secular entertainment and dominions as much as possible when confronted or using secular dominions. Pray your boundaries of protection. Avoid the seven mountain mandate deception. Liberal churches believe that Christians need to rule over the seven dominions that they perceive can help them manage the world. This is religion, family, government, education, media, arts and entertainment, and business. This is a deception. All of these dominions belong to the demons, okay? And if you are going to try and run the dominions for them, that doesn't make any sense. Like, oh, it's gonna be Christian. N no, you can't have a Christian demon. It's not even a thing, okay? Um, this is super ridiculous. Now, we are to be unique and set apart as Christians. We are to stick to the conservative doctrine while creating our own inspired methods that align with our own value system. We're not supposed to use their system as much as possible. Now, seven, understand the truth of our generation. 
our pastors and churches were deceived. Seeker friendly is the antithesis. We are called to stand out and be different, not fit in and be like the culture. Our standards should be set by the Bible standards. We have been functioning with one arm tied behind our back. We have the power to dominate, but in general, the church rolls over. Our churches are taught from the view of defeat. We were not taught to pray properly, often enough, or aggressively enough. We were not taught effectively how to walk in the spirit. We have no reason to be the victim. We have no right to not stand and fight for Christ. When we break free from the deception, we break free from the lies, then we conquer. We have to own the fact that we are warriors in God's army and we're called to this and we do have the authority. So I hope this has helped you. There's going to be a PDF if you want to go in the link and go find it because then you might, you know, want the chart or whatever so you can look at all the different charts with all the colors because everything with the color all coordinates on the same stuff. Okay, so then you can find the spirit, you can find what to pray, whatever you want to do. So I hope this has helped you. It's been a lot of fun to pull together and I'll see you next time.